Okay, in this video, we're going to see how to find the arc lengths when we have parametric equations. And let's just find the arc lengths from here to here. All right, we are going to utilize the Cartesian equation first because we can draw a connection this way. And remember, this is the picture that we do. Well, when you have a curve, you cannot measure the curve, but you can measure straight lines. So what we do is that you can just pick a point maybe right here and then you can draw a small tangent segment. And of course, it's supposed to be really, really small, right? And this right here, we'll call this to be DL, a small change amount in the R length, okay? Well, you know if you go horizontally, this is a small change in the X value, so this is DX, and if you go up vertically, this is DY. So by doing that, you can form a little right triangle, and DL is pretty much the hypotenuse. Of course, you can figure that out. This is just going to be the square root of this square plus that square. So I put down dx square plus dy square. And the arc length, it's pretty much that we just add out all the dl's from here to here. And of course, we have to use integral. So we have the integral of all the dl's. Well, the problem is that we don't know too much about dl. I don't know the l world, but it's okay. Depending on the situation, depending on if you have y as a function of x or x as a function of y. In our case, we have y as a function of x. So from here, I will factor out the dx square, and then I can, you know, square root and square cancel, I will have the dx on the whole side. So this is going to be the integral. As I said, we will have the dx on the outside. And then if you factor out dx square, this is going to be 1 and then dx squared in the denominator here, you will get plus, and because they are both to the second power, we can write it as dy dx and then square, and of course, we still have the square root. And I guess you can check out my other video for a more detailed explanation on the algebra. But anyway, when you do that, you will be in the x world. So you pay attention to the x values. So let me write down, we need to go from x1 to x2, the x values. So, if you want to figure out the arc length in our situation, right here, the x value is negative 1, plugging 1 into all the t's in the x equation, and then for you plugging 4 into the x equation, you get 8. Therefore, the arc length from 1 to, from 1 to 4 in the t values, it's the same as the integral from negative 1 to 8, and these are the x values. And of course, you just use this formula now, you have 1 plus. Well, I need the derivative. I'll look at here, and I'll differentiate y with respect to x. So this is not that bad. You get dy dx is equal to, derivative 2 is 0, derivative of this is 1 over 2 square root of x plus 1. So you just put this right here, and you're pretty much done. So you just write down 1 over 2 square root of x plus 1, and then you square that, and of course, you have the dx on the very outside. And then, in the end, just work everything out, you get approximately 9.747. So I'm not going to do this by hand because the interesting part is to talk about the formulas, like the proofs of all of that. All right, now here's the deal. Suppose we don't have the Cartesian form for the curve. We really have to deal with the parametric equations, and this is how we are going to do it. Notice, we are still pretty much doing this, right? That's the main part, the arc length. And you can use capital L for the arc length, but let me just make it super clear. The arc length, it's pretty much the integral of all the DLs. Well, well, I don't know about the L world, so I cannot put down any of the numbers here, but I know DL, it's the same as that. What are DX and DY? This time, we have x as a function of t, and y is also a function of t. So in fact, if you would like, you can differentiate this. You get dx dt, which is just the derivative on the right-hand side. And you can multiply dt on both sides, so you get dx equals x prime of t dt. And similarly, you can do the same thing. So you will get dy equals y prime of t dt. And yes, we are just going to plug in this and that for this and that. So you will see that for the dl, it's going to be the square root. And for the dx, is this thing in the parentheses and you square that. So we put the parentheses 
x prime of t dt and you square that and then we add it with parentheses y prime of t dt and we square that and this right here is for the dy and now of course we still have the integral on the very outside but I still cannot put down any numbers yet but we are about to notice the inside this guy has dt squared likewise this guy also has dt squared right so I can factor out the dt squared and perhaps I'll just take one more line this is the integral and we will have the square root and because they have the dt squared so let me factor out the dt square right here and then we multiply by well first we will have x prime of t squared so you differentiate whatever the x equation is you put in here and square that and then you add this with y prime of t and you square that because now I can just say square root of dt squared is just the regular dt and we can put that at the end here now you know this is in the t world meaning that you have to look for the starting t value and also the ending t value so we use t1 t2 right here so if you would like this is the arc length formula this is the l and let me just show you guys in our situation the setup will be the integral t1 is 1 and t2 is 4 so you can just put down from 1 to 4 and then you open your square root parentheses and now let's see what's x prime of t for this you look back to the x equation and then you are just going to differentiate that with respect to t and you get 2t minus 2 and that goes right here 2t minus 2 and then you square that and you are going to add parentheses y prime of t you look back here and this is just t plus 1 when you differentiate that with respect to t you get 1 so you have 1 right here and then you have the square and it's just totally a coincidence that you also have the plus 1 like that but that's just a totally coincidence because of course y of t can be more complicated than that so you do have to enter whatever the derivative is from the y equation anyway in the end here you put down the dt you are in the t world go ahead calculate that I can wait for you guys but I will just use the calculator with you guys which of course you know the answer 9.747 anyway the most important part is this this is how you calculate the arc length in the parametric equation situation that's pretty much it and let me know if you guys have any questions